The insane methods required to deal with EV fires. When an electric vehicle catches fire, it's not just your average car blaze. It's a whole different beast. The methods required to put out these fires are nothing short of extreme, pushing first responders to use tactics that sound more like scenes from a disaster movie than real life firefighting. From dumping cars into rivers to drowning them in massive water tanks, the ways we have to deal with EV fires are downright insane. Let's dive into just how wild these methods really are. Dumping large amounts of water. When it comes to dealing with EV fires, one of the most shocking and downright absurd methods is the sheer volume of water needed to put out these blazing infernos. We're not talking about the usual amount of water you'd expect for a regular car fire. Oh no. That would be too simple. For an EV fire, firefighters are often forced to dump an eye-popping 150 tons of water. No, I'm not misspeaking here. 150 tons. To put that into perspective, that's more than 10 times the amount required for a conventional vehicle fire. Why so much water, you ask? Well, the problem lies in the EV's battery pack, which is a ticking time bomb when it comes to fire hazards. These lithium ion batteries burn hot, and once they ignite, they're like a firework show gone horribly wrong. The fire can be so intense that the only way to even have a shot of putting it out is by drowning it in water. This massive deluge is supposed to cool down the fire and prevent the battery from reigniting. But here's the kicker, dumping all that water still doesn't guarantee that the fire won't reignite. Damaged battery cells can smolder and reignite hours or heck, even days later. So what's the deal here? We're throwing ridiculous amounts of water at these EVs, wasting resources, and it still might not get the job done. It's not just impractical, it's downright irresponsible. This isn't just a minor inconvenience, it's a fundamental flaw in EV technology that no one wants to talk about. All that water, all that effort, and still no guarantees. It's time to question whether these EVs are really the future we want, or if they're just another problem waiting to explode. Dumping a vehicle into a river or lake. Another method that truly highlights the madness of dealing with EV fires is the downright wild idea of just picking up the burning vehicle and dumping it into a nearby river or lake. Yeah, you heard that right. Literally scooping up the flaming car with a claw excavator and tossing it into the water like it's yesterday's trash. It sounds like a scene from a disaster movie more than real life firefighting. But believe it or not, this extreme method it has actually been used. Now, before you chuckle too much at the absurdity of it all, let's break down why this method is even considered. The idea is to completely isolate the fire by submerging the EV in water, cutting it off from oxygen, and preventing it from spreading to nearby vehicles or structures. It's the ultimate, if you can't beat it, drown it approach. And while it might seem like a little overkill, it can be surprisingly effective. After all, if a burning EV is left unchecked, it could easily ignite anything in its path, turning a bad situation into a full-blown catastrophe. But let's not lose sight of how ridiculous this reality is. We're talking about using heavy machinery to physically remove a car from the scene and dump it into a body of water. An act that's more desperate than it is practical. And sure, it might work in the short term, but what about long-term consequences? We're potentially contaminating waterways with hazardous metals from the burning battery. Plus, this method is a last-ditch effort, a Hail Mary when all else fails, highlighting just how ill-prepared we are to deal with EV fires in the first place. Submerging the vehicle in water. Another head-scratching idea for dealing with EV fires is the suggestion to submerge the entire vehicle in a massive tank of water. The idea here is simple. Drown the fire by cutting off its oxygen supply and cooling the vehicle down completely. Now on paper, it sounds like a foolproof plan. No oxygen, no fire, right? But in reality, this approach is more of a logistical nightmare than a practical solution. First, let's consider the sheer size of the tank you'd need to pull this off. We're not talking about a kiddie pool here. You need a tank large enough to fully submerge a vehicle, which is no small feat. And then there's the question of how you actually get the burning EV into this tank. It's not like you can just roll it in gently. You need specialized equipment like cranes or heavy duty lifts to hoist the flaming vehicle and plop it into the water. This isn't exactly something that can be done quickly or easily, especially when time is of the essence in a fire emergency. I mean, also imagine if this is a car stuck in a parking garage. 
Even if you somehow manage to get the tank and the equipment in place, there's still the issue of actually having this setup ready to go wherever an EV fire might occur. Imagine trying to transport a giant water tank and all the necessary machinery to the scene of a fire. It's just not realistic. And let's not forget the potential environmental impact of submerging a burning, possibly chemically hazardous vehicle in water. The water used could become contaminated, creating a whole new set of problems to deal with. So while submerging the vehicle in water might technically work in some idealized scenarios, it's far from a practical or scalable solution. It's another example of the extreme measures we're forced to consider because of the unique dangers posed by EV fires. Instead of trying to retrofit solutions to these problems, maybe it's time we ask ourselves if these vehicles are worth the trouble in the first place. Why should we have to entertain such outlandish methods just to to deal with a fire. The fact that we even have to consider something as bizarre as dunking a car in water tanks, that speaks volumes about the challenges and risks that come with EVs. Challenges for first responders. Now, the problem with EV fires does not end with the insane methods required to put them out. The first responders also face some issues. For instance, one of the most crucial and often overlooked challenges for first responders when dealing with EV fires is the sheer lack of standardized procedures. Unlike Conventional fires, where the process of extinguishing a fire is relatively straightforward and consistent, electric vehicles throw a wrench into the works with their complex and varied designs. Each EV model can have a completely different battery layout, not to mention specific instructions on how to safely handle a fire. This means that the firefighters can't just rely on a one-sized-fits-all training. They need to be able to quickly identify the exact make and model of the EV, and then somehow access the right information on how to deal with it. Talk about adding stress to an already chaotic situation. To give firefighters a fighting chance, some have turned to technology using apps that provide diagrams and instructions for various EV models. These apps show where the batteries are located, how they're arranged, and what steps should be taken in the event of a fire. Sounds helpful, right? But let's pause for a moment and think about what this reality means for the first responders on the ground. In the middle of a blazing fire, with smoke billowing and adrenaline pumping, they're now expected to pull out their phones, scroll through an app, and study a diagram to figure out how to put out the fire. It's like trying to solve a puzzle while your house is burning down around you. And that's assuming they have the time or ability to do so. Firefighters are trained to act quickly and make split-second decisions to save lives and property. The idea that they should stop what they're doing and play detective to figure out which EV model they're dealing with is not only impractical, it is downright dangerous. There's also the issue of what if the app malfunctions or there's no signal in a remote area? The reliance on such technology introduces another layer of complexity and potential failure in an already high stakes environment. Furthermore, this lack of standardization isn't just a minor inconvenience, it's a major safety hazard. If first responders don't have the correct information, they risk causing more harm than good. An EV battery can react violently if mishandled, potentially leading to explosions or further fires. Without clear, consistent procedures across all EV models, firefighters are left to navigate a minefield every time they encounter an EV. This problem goes beyond just firefighting. It's symptomatic of a larger issue within the EV industry itself. The rush to market these vehicles has led to a situation where the technology is outpacing the safety protocols needed to manage it. Manufacturers are churning out different models with different configurations, but there's been little effort to create a unified approach to handling emergencies. It's as if the industry is saying, here's a brand new kind of car. Good luck trying to figure out how to deal with it if it catches fire. In the end, the challenge for first responders is not just about putting out the fire. It's about navigating a landscape that's increasingly chaotic and unpredictable. The tools and information they need are often buried behind layers of complexity, forcing them to make crucial decisions with incomplete knowledge. And that's not just a challenge, it is a recipe for disaster. Instead of giving firefighters the support they need, we're throwing them into situations where the stakes are higher, the risks are greater, and the outcomes are far from certain. It's yet another reason to question whether the push for EVs is truly as forward thinking as it's made out to be, or if we're simply setting ourselves up for a host of new problems down the road. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel so you can see more videos like this.